Charity, giving, paying it forward, donating, putting your money where your mouth is, whatever you wanna call it, the act of charitable donations is far from a new concept. It actually dates back as far as 2500 BCE, but we're not here to give you a history lesson. No, today is all about the digital donation culture, which on the surface seems like a straightforward, lawful, good type of space, right? And yeah, in a lot of cases, providing support to a cause you care about in the form of monetary donation is great. But like everything in our rapidly evolving online culture, it's complicated. So let's level up together so you can put your money where your mouth is safely, securely, and hopefully scam free. I'm Sid and this is AFK. As the charity game has evolved, introduced way more players, and found a comfortable home in the digital sphere, it's becoming way harder to trace where donations are actually going. But as our culture faces social movements like BLM and crises like COVID-19, we've seen a reframing of how, where, and why we give our money to others. Instant digital donation platforms like Cash App have made it easier to send money directly to specific people or groups versus filtering our donations through larger organizations. We spoke to SJ Brown at JU. Uh, JAYU is an arts and social justice charity that shares humanized stories through the arts. And uh, we do that through a variety of different programs. We offer arts and social justice mentorship training to equity deserving youth from across the province. We also have a podcast called The Hum. Uh, we also offer free arts events on the last Tuesdays of each month. And then something we're ramping up to right now is the Human Rights Film Festival, which includes films as well as spoken word poetry performances, art galleries, like a whole bunch of different fun stuff that takes place every December during International Human Rights Month. With younger demographics, we see uh, people want to make donations in different ways than maybe their parents did. Um, typically, we see things like donations by check. Uh, or donations by stocks or um, new planned giving. So people giving in their will. And you still see that at a lot of like larger institutions, but because Jai is a smaller charity, um, most of our donations are made through uh, online platforms. So we receive donations online uh, through Facebook fundraisers. Um, you can receive donations through things like TikTok. We also see people who come together uh, instead of to make an individual donation, they make a crowdfunded donation. So maybe they say, you know, I want to sponsor an event at JIU. I want to sponsor an, a film. Um, and so they'll come together, they'll crowdfund, and they'll make a group donation. We also receive a lot of donations through Facebook fundraisers for birthdays. So that's a new one that we're seeing quite often. Um, and then we also see a lot of in-kind donations. So donations made with goods and services, which would be people donating uh, you know, camera equipment or video equipment or tech for our studio. Um, and then we still see traditionally, you know, people who want to make big gifts um, to receive a tax receipt. And so they might still make, you know, quite a large gift through a check or through a transfer. Do you have any advice for people on what the best method is that that's going to be safe and secure? Most times, if you do your research, you'll be able to tell if it's a reputable organization. Um, and by doing research, I would say to one, you know, find an organization that matters to you, whose like cause you feel very passionate about. And then um, again, everybody's research and the methods they do will look different, but I personally, um, to make sure it's a, it's a look to their leadership. So I look at their board of directors, I look at their staff and I make sure that it reflects the diversity of the city we live in and that it reflects the community that that organization serves. That's important to me. Um, then you're going to want to like look at their website, subscribe to the newsletter, follow them on social, make sure that their programs that they offer are impactful and reputable and that they do good work kind of similar, you're going to then go look at those annual reports. Uh, you can usually find a couple years worth on a charity's website. So you can look a few years back to see the financial health of the organization and the impact that your gift is likely to have. And then pro tip, if you really want to like really do your due diligence here, um, you'll look for their charitable registration number, which should be listed everywhere on their website. But you can also go to the Canada Revenue Agency and you can even just Google CRA charity listing 
and then you can search by name an organization that you might potentially want to donate to and um, their recent tax returns will be published. So you can see their most recent year's uh, operating budget. So their like revenues and expenses. And you can also, this is why I say pro tip, uh, you can see their salary distribution of their top 10 earning staff. Any organization that is a reputable place that you wanna be donating your money is run by people who are super passionate about the work they do and they want to talk to you. So find their number, give them a call, talk to them, say, I want to make sure this donation is being put to good use. I want to make sure this is safe and secure. Uh, tell me why I should donate to you. And speaking from Jayu's perspective, like we love hearing from people. So, so don't forget that you can also find the human part of these organizations and speak to a real person. That is all amazing advice. You said a lot there. Um, and I think it'll be really, really helpful to all of our viewers. So thank you so much. We've also seen a huge uptick in charitable crowdfunding through platforms like Kickstarter and GoFundMe, which take out the middleman to crowdfund financial needs for things like surgeries, protest supplies, bail funds, and other financial support needed to keep these movements going. These digital platforms coupled with a generation facing a quite complicated future means that social philanthropy is thriving, but that doesn't mean it's without its complications. The modern lens of charity hasn't just taken the form of peer-to-peer -peer donations. Peer-to-peer -peer lending has become more common as Gen Zs make use of all the new tools available and step away from the more traditional ways of lending. This generation wants to help and we're willing to invest in causes we care about. Enter a platform like Kiva.org. Kiva is a nonprofit group that wants to change the way that underserved folks and communities get access to loans. Again, for those that want to help and show their support to specific causes, this allows for the on-demand ability to really put your money where your mouth is, where you can loan money directly to those in need. So whether you're looking to lift up communities in the arts or women's groups, environmental causes, or whatever you care about, this is a true embodiment of how technology is completely transforming the game of charity and lending. Unfortunately, charity and digital donations haven't been safe from corporate greed and some unsavory characters. It's almost a prerequisite for big businesses to have a CSR component, thanks to younger generations citing real, on paper evidence of brands doing good as a reason to make purchases. This has led to a true sliding scale of impactful change made possible through corporations. Think Levi's and their multifaceted environmental impact plan versus surface level virtue signaling that actually does more harm than good. Think Volkswagen getting caught with engines emitting in dirty mode as they touted an eco-friendly emissions report to the public. Yikes. The Volkswagen story, along with plenty of other CSR efforts gone wrong, feels like a reminder to the public that we can't always take a brand's word for it when it comes to impact. But there are companies that really walk the walk. Shout out to brands making a real positive impact, like Patagonia on the front lines of environmental and social responsibility, or Lego and their drive and commitment towards sustainable materials, and RBC really supporting youth causes through programs like Future Launch. And then there are the influencers who, of course, are aligning themselves with social and political causes online more than ever. Much like big businesses, some influencers really do put their money where their mouth is and shell out serious cash that drives real change. And then some make social content aimed at driving social awareness during a global pandemic and end up with the Imagine video. <laughs> Imagine video, we salute you. And now it's time for the debate. You might be asking what the harm is if influencers fumble their way through half-assed attempts at promoting a social cause, as long as they're making some noise and spreading awareness and donating their hard-earned influencer money. No surprise, it gets very murky out there. And we've seen tons of charities and famous people in a mess. We're looking at you. The Save the Kids crypto scandal was a specifically harsh reminder of how influencer-led charity movements can go very, very wrong. 
The Save the Kids token emerged as a new cryptocurrency peddled by some hefty influencers. It was promoted as a token that would redistribute dollars to charities in need. But long story short, that wasn't the case. And tons of loyal influencer followers ended up having bought into a worthless form of crypto. This unfortunate tale points to the reality that we're living in a time where influencers with any clout will have audiences who are willing to follow them and do whatever they're asked without much research involved, leaving us with the question of how much, if any, responsibility influencers need to take when publicly putting their money where their mouth is. So when it comes to you as an individual out there looking to take part in this vast, often complicated world of charity and digital donations, one term comes to mind, due diligence. Supporting causes with your money when you're able to do so is important. So making sure you're doing so safely and avoiding scams will help you maximize your impact. When it comes to donating to registered charities for the first time, always take the time to do some research to find out if they're legit. A legitimate charity in Canada should be registered through the CRA and should never ask you for donations in the form of cash, gift card, or wire transfer. And for peer-to-peer -peer digital donations, keep your due diligence game strong and make sure that your money is going where you think it is. That's it. Yeah. All right, all right. <laughs> For most young digital donators, the incentive to give is usually fully based on the cause itself and not tax advantages or social status at a stuffy charity event. But the truth is that donating to worthy causes is usually an opportunity for tax deductions. So we highly suggest that you keep your receipts. Keeping track of your donations is crucial for when tax season rolls around. And be mindful of the tools available to help. Our friends at RBC actually allow you to donate the reward points that you've earned on debit and credit cards directly to the charity you support. We hope you feel inspired to get out there and donate to causes you care about. Keep the momentum going and always stay safe and secure. Thanks for watching. I'm Sid, this is AFK, and we'll see you next time on Level Up.